According to recent reports, Canada's student visa rejection rate for Indians is almost 50% and for Punjab, it's estimated to be around 60%. So why is that Canada is rejecting almost half the Indian students' applications for student visa? Hello everybody, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and in this video, we'll discuss about the main reasons why the student visa for Canada are getting rejected. And obviously, from this, you can get to learn specific steps and points to avoid those mistakes through which you can ensure that your visa gets approved or at least you can lower the chances of your Canadian student visa getting refused. This video is going to be very interesting. Stay tuned. Okay, so let me start this video with some numbers. When we talk about the student visa rejection, so it's not like the student visa rejections have started just now. Earlier also, before the pandemic, the rejections used to happen. But back then, the rejection percentage was around 35%. So let's say that in a particular year, if 100,000 applications uh, were submitted, then around 65,000 would get approved, while 35,000 would get rejected. This plain and simple. But now, in 2022, the rejection rate has increased up to almost 50%. Somewhere actually between 45 to 50%, which means that Almost half the applications that get uh, applied from India for Canadian student visa actually get rejected. So what are the main reasons behind it? First, let's talk about the what and then we will talk about why. Many of you might be aware that Canada is now sitting at a backlog of around 2.5 million applications. And most of them are for TRVs, which means temporary resident visas and student uh, visas are a part of TRV. Out of those two and a half million applications, around one fifth of those applications, which means around five to six hundred thousand applications come only from India. And there's huge, huge pressure on the Canadian government to clear the backlogs as early as possible. So of course there would be pressure on the staff to take care of these applications, either approve or reject them as early as possible. Now, because most of the applications actually come from India, so of course there would be one reason that they would want some kind of diversity uh, when international students get around in the uh, university or the colleges. If they're only Indian students, then you know that would not make sense, right? So that is one reason. But of course, apart from that, when they have to uh, take care of so many applications, and it might not be wrong to say that they would reject or refuse those applications uh, which are not up to the mark. And when we say not up to the mark, we're talking about many different reasons why these applications get rejected. So now let's talk about all those different reasons why your application could be rejected. And of course, we'll talk about how you can actually take care and make sure that your application is not one of them and you land here in Canada with a student visa. Now, these reasons are not arranged in any particular order of importance. All the reasons are important and you need to make sure that you don't give any excuse to the visa officer. Just think of the visa officer as a teacher who has got 10 papers and out of those 10 applications, he has to select five or six. So he will select the best five or six applications, right? So your application needs to be in the better half and you cannot afford any mistake and give any excuse to the visa officer. So let's start with the first reason, the IELTS score. Now for all the SDS colleges, the minimum eligibility criteria is six bands each in reading, writing, listening and speaking. So if you get 5.5 in any of the sections, you send the request to the college or the university. Even if they accept your uh, request and they send you the acceptance letter, even then there are high chances that the visa officer would reject your application. So please make sure that you send your visa application or submit it only after you have secured six bands each in each section of the uh, IELTS test. Now here I want to say that however six is just the minimum eligibility criteria nowadays because you know that they just want an excuse to reject your application right. So you should aim for seven bands each. 
I know some of you might say that it's very difficult. I know I've also appeared in IELTS a um, couple of years ago. It's not very easy, definitely. But at least securing 6.5 is achievable. So if not 7, you should target 6.5 in each. That would increase the chances of your application getting approved. Okay, the second reason is the contradiction between your area of interest and your academic background. So let's say you're a civil engineer, you completed your studies in civil engineering and also working in the civil engineering field, but applying for studies for master's degree for computer science, that is a contradiction. So at least there should be some sort of relationship between your previous studies, your academic background, your uh, work experience and the major that you have selected to study in Canada. Okay, now when we're talking about the academic background, uh, we talked about the area of your study. We can also talk about the degree that you have already achieved. So let's say that uh, you already had masters in India and now you want to immigrate to Canada on the study permit and you're going for a diploma. That would give a sense to the visa officer that you just want to apply for the study permit just for the purpose of landing in Canada so that maybe you can eventually down the line settle here. And that's not the message that you want to convey through your visa application. So please make sure that if you've got a master's degree, you apply for another master's degree. I know some of you might not be prepared for uh, you know another master's degree or you know higher studies of that sorts but if that is the way to go if that is the only option then that is what you have to do okay now the next point is about the financial background so of course they need to know that how is your financial background is your family well to do by this I mean that would you be able to take care of your expenses when you're here in Canada so of course GIC is one thing but apart from that uh, you need to show sufficient balances. So if you expected to show something around let's say um, 30,000 Canadian dollars just a random example again maybe show them 35,000 or maybe 40,000 whatever you have uh, in your bank accounts whatever you can show as your assets it's better to show that that would give them the confidence that yes you are well to do from your family your family has your back and even if you don't do any part-time jobs here your family can take care of your expenses okay the next point is about SOP the statement of purpose I cannot stress on this point enough creating your SOP is probably one of the most important things in your visa application many times students feel that they've attached all the required documents now SOP is just a formality no the statement of purpose, the SOP should be very precise, it should be very clear, it should note down all the points, maybe uh, some points that why are you choosing Canada, why do you want to pursue higher education, why are you choosing that particular college or university, why do you want to choose that particular course, all these different things need to be there. You just cannot ignore the importance of a clear and precise SOP when you're applying for the study visa for Canada. All right, next point is about the documents. Of course, you know there is no scope of error when we talk about documents. All the documents need to be in place. Now, many times we as students don't apply for the student visa by ourselves. We go through immigration consultants and we know uh, there are so many immigration consultants, especially for Canada and especially in Punjab. And many of them are not licensed, regulated consultants. However, they might have submitted dozens or hundreds of applications of other students. They might be making some mistakes and that might cost you your dream. And you cannot afford making those mistakes. So first of all, of course, you need to make sure that all your documents are legitimate. You've included all the documents that were uh, supposed to go in there. And then of course, the review is also very important. Even if your consultant say that, okay, we have done it, we'll submit it. No, just tell them that we want to review our applications. Even when you don't have the required knowledge, it's very important that you review your own application. Maybe some document is missing. Maybe they're trying to play smart and they've included some extra documents which are not legitimate. But at the end of the day, it would be your responsibility to make sure that your application is up to date, your application is up to the mark 
and they've included all the important documents and made sure that all the information that you're putting into the application is absolutely correct. Especially when you talk to these consultants, they might suggest to you sometimes that, okay, you give us some extra money and we will arrange some document for you and we'll submit it. Don't worry. We have uh, you know, seen so many such cases before. We have got so many visas approved. So you should not be doing any sorts of jugar there. So guys, those were all the points that you need to take care of. But sometimes it happens that even if you have taken care of all those points, even if you have good IL score, your uh, financial background is also strong, your academic background is also strong, sometimes even then your visa gets rejected. So in that case, what should you do? I would suggest that don't get discouraged. That's the first thing. We have seen so many people um, whose visa gets rejected on the first time, even the second time, and they get it the third time. So don't lose hope, have time in your hand. So don't hurry, even the first time when you're submitting the application, and also if you're submitting for the second or the third time, don't hurry, don't rush and submit your application um, you know, in a rush. That would mean that you might make some mistake. Then after that, look out for the reason why your visa was rejected and try to improve on that point particularly. Even if 50% visa applications are getting rejected, that still means that 50% visas are getting approved. So if class is half empty, it's half full as well. So don't get discouraged by that fact. Try your best to take care of all these points, especially IELTS. We sometimes feel that we have given our best, but deep down in our heart, we know that if we put more effort to it, at least I would be able to improve by that 0.5 band. And that would make a lot of difference. Anyways, guys, these were all the important points I wanted to talk about in this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the like button. Please put your comments, your feedback in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.